So think how extreme this gets. Um, this is a F-35. Oh, whoops, can we get it? Yeah, cool. This is F-35. So the F-35 pilots, they have a helmet. And on the outside of the F-35 are a whole set of high-resolution cameras. And they provide and project in real time the outside image of wherever the pilot turns their head onto the pilot's eyes. So what that means is that now they've added like thermal imaging. So anywhere the pilot looks, they're just seeing. And more importantly, because these things are kind of hard to land because they can land vertically, the pilot can look between his legs or her legs and actually see the ship. They actually don't see the airplane anymore. In fact, everywhere they look, they don't see the airplane. They just see whatever is there. And so they are living in a completely different like virtual reality. And if they see something really far away, they can just decide to zoom in on it. And as a result of that, these F-35s are actually really, really effective because the advantage to the pilot is so significant because the pilot essentially has become a bird. The plane and the pilot have become one. And if you remember from that last talk, that's kind of the point I'm trying to make is that these things are sort of fusing into us and we are becoming sort of the very technology. This is... Uh, this is a fighter plane on the lower right that you're all familiar with. On the upper is a drone. And it'll really give you a feeling for the sophistication level of the drones. Most drones sort of do something different. This one is actually built also to do what fighters do, except you don't put a fighter in it. So there's nobody to die in it. The best pilots can pull like seven Gs. In fact, if you put a G suit on and you pressurize their legs so their blood doesn't get to go down into their legs, they can pull 10 Gs. That X-37B, 32 Gs. I mean, really, like you see an X-37B, you should just eject because there's no, there's no comparative chance that you have against that anymore. And you can still provide a pilot if you wanted to, just not actually in the plane. These are... Um, these are a couple Global Hawks. They're so autonomous that we don't even have a joystick for them anymore. They're actually just a mouse. We pull them out of the hangar because they can't communicate until you pull them out. And then you click the mouse and the mission's all pre-programmed. They go down the runway, they take off, they fly, they avoid the right air spaces, they perform their mission, they come back and then after they land and pull up to the hangar, they say they're done. And so even if you wanted to turn the plane, you couldn't like do that. And these are them. I mean, refueling airplanes, there's like very few countries in the world that can even refuel airplanes in the sky. They already are refueling themselves. And they do that fully autonomously. There's not a human being touching, touching anything. So you're seeing that sophistication level move very quickly. And the right way to think about this is as machines get good at things, we tend to not think of them actually as competing with us. I mean, when a car, a car goes 60 miles an hour, you don't think like, oh, a car is faster than me, it beats me all the time. You just think that's just what cars do, right? I mean, when a submarine, if, if submarines swim, I guess they swim, but we don't really think of it as swimming. Well, it's easy to think about that in the mechanical sense. Think now as we think about in the intelligence sense what happens. Because machines now are starting to get very, very smart, and they're starting to get smart at things that we're, that we're actually not, not, very, uh, not very used to. I'll skip through some things just on the interest of time. Um, but this is a, whoops, this is a pretty key point. So this is what I call the red pill, blue pill <laughs> for people not believing in virtual reality. I think what we know now is an awful lot about how your brain actually sees the world. And we used to think that your brain had like little cameras <laughs> and then anywhere you looked, your brain would like see the image and then try and interpret the image. And now, I think we know that might actually not be true, that instead, oddly what is happening is that this image, what you are seeing right now, is actually a model inside of your head. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's actually the only way you, that that transition happens between what you're seeing and what's in your head. In other words, you're already in virtual reality. The real world doesn't look anything like this. I mean, if you look at the real world, I mean, you know this table is not solid even from, you know, eighth grade chemistry. There's not one solid object in here. This thing is all space and it's all just moving atoms. But we're like too dumb to perceive that level of detail. And so we have an extremely dumbed down version of the world and this is our dumbed down version. 
And what that means is it allows virtual reality at least to catch up a lot faster than we, than we think or, or that we expect. And that will unquestionably um, change the world. Thank you.